If you've ever struggled figuring out where to travel to as a digital nomad or where to start your digital nomad journey, then you are in the right place because today's video is all about where do digital nomads choose to live and why. And be sure to stay till the very end where I will share how you can know exactly where the best destination is for you to start. I'm Taylor Gill and I teach remote professionals how to navigate the overwhelm of the work anywhere, live everywhere lifestyle. And today I am sharing with you where digital nomads choose to live. Now, all the destinations on this list um, kind of have similar themes. One is that they are very affordable. Two, they typically have really good food. And three, they have other activities or culture around that you can do outside of work. So just know that there's like, those tend to be the main things that people always talk about when they talk about destinations. Um, we're going to get into some other reasons why these locations are popular for nomads, but that's just sort of like common themes among all of them. So the first country on the list is Thailand. And most nomads either end up in Bangkok, Chiang Mai, or in some cases, Phuket, but it's a little bit smaller. So I've personally been to Bangkok and Phuket. Um, I will say they're both very different. <laughs> Bangkok and Chiang Mai are the bigger cities. Phuket's going to be a really small sort of like coastal town. It does have access to a beach, which is nice. All in all, Thailand is a huge hub for digital nomads for the reasons I just mentioned above as far as its affordability and its really good food, really good Thai food. Um, where it becomes less affordable is if you're really looking for like a lot of Western food or Western comforts. So if you stick more local and eating the local food and where the locals hang out, then that is where you find the really, really affordable prices in the country. There are lots of cafes and co-working spaces in Thailand. There's a very active nomad community, so it's easy to meet others, especially if you don't speak the local language. You can definitely find other people who speak English or a mix of other languages. Um, and another thing that makes Thailand really popular amongst nomads is its visa. So it's pretty easy to get a six-month multi-entry visa into the country, which also makes it a really good hub if you want to explore other Southeast Asia locations. Um, but there are different ways and you can Google them online that you can extend that visa or do visa runs, but that makes Thailand a really popular destination for nomads. So another country right next door to Thailand is Vietnam. And this is another destination with a large, actually have a large expat um, community, but also digital nomad community. So you'll find that most people end up in Ho Chi Minh City um, or Hanoi, or even some cases Da Nang. So again, Da Nang is that smaller destination, well, not quite on the map as the other ones, but it's still pretty popular for nomads. Um, again, you kind of have your big cities, you have a lot of culture, you have a lot of activities that you can do outside of your work. Um, there are plenty of cafes. Vietnam has a huge uh, coffee culture, so there are a lot of cafes. Vietnamese coffee is so good, I fell in love with it. Um, and there's also co-working spaces and again, a really just active community. So. Vietnam is another destination where the visa is fairly easy to get and extend if you need to, or if you want to. The third destination on this list is Bali, which if you didn't know, Bali is actually an island in Indonesia. So Bali is not the country itself, but it is a very popular destination and it's an island. So that's why people just refer to it as Bali. So most nomads are going to end up in Chenggu or Ubud. Um, I will say that of all the places on this list, this is the one I really did not like, which is kind of crazy. Um, although I've actually met more people and you either seem to love Bali or hate Bali. And I'm kind of in the, I don't really love Bali stage. Um, I might give another chance one day, but the biggest draw to Bali is that it, again, it's an island. So it's surrounded by beaches and by water. There's good surfing. Um, the food is really, really good. You're going to find more um, fruits and vegetables, more organic things than maybe some of the other destinations on the list. 
Um, it's again, it's super affordable and there's a really, really active nomad community throughout the entire island. Now, the downside to Bali is because it's an island is it's not as easy to travel to other destinations. It is as it is, say, like Thailand or Vietnam. Um, but island hopping is a really big part of the nomad culture there. So just know that that would be kind of like your activities outside um, or as far as like traveling activities, that would be what you would have to do. Next on the list is Mexico. And this is actually the one where I spent the most time recently. You're gonna find that most people spend time in Mexico City, in Playa del Carmen or in Oaxaca, which is on, so Playa is on the East Coast, Oaxaca is on the West Coast, Mexico City is the capital. And Mexico City is actually in the top 10 largest cities in the world. So think about everything you would get from a really large city like Tokyo or something, you're gonna get that in Mexico City. There's museums, there's a ton of culture, there's, from what I heard, amazing food. Um, I haven't visited there myself. I spent three months in Playa del Carmen, so I spent my time on the coast, near the water, um, swimming and snorkeling and doing all the really fun water activities. So whatever kind of vibe you're going for, Mexico actually has a lot to offer. The country um, is really pretty large and so that gives you some diverse landscapes that you can explore. So again, it's affordable, it has a really good food, it has a variety of cuisines, um, and for US citizens, you can get into Mexico for six months. There's also um, other visa schemes that you can do that allow you to stay a little bit longer if that's what you'd like to do. And the next one on the list is Cape Town, South Africa. And this is the one that I am dying to go to. I have not been to Africa at all, um, but I've heard of really, really amazing things about Cape Town. So you kind of have a mix of all, you know, best of all the worlds. You have the beach and surfing, you have the mountains for hiking, um, you have just gorgeous, gorgeous views. They have really great coffee shops and co-working spaces. The nomad community in Cape Town specifically is pretty active, so you can always find other nomads in the area. And it's just generally sunny and warm <laughs> year round. So if you do not like cold and you are looking for good weather and a place with a lot of really good activities and something that's maybe, I wouldn't call it off the beaten path, by any means, but maybe something just a little bit different to the typical locations, Cape Town might be a really great option. And the last one on the list is Portugal. So you're gonna find most people hanging, hanging out in Lisbon, Porto, and there's a brand new nomad village in Madeira. So Portugal has like really come on the map in the last couple of years. It, no one was really talking about it. And now it's like where all the nomads are going. Again, kind of like, Cape Town has a really great weather almost year round. It's pretty sunny. You have the coast and you have really great access still to all of Europe. And it's also really close to Morocco, which is the northern part of Africa. So if you really want to mix up your travel experiences outside of work, Portugal is going to be a great place to get started. And compared to maybe some other European cities, it does have a lower cost of living. It has a lot of green space. It really has that cosmo cosmopolitan feel. Um, but again, because it's just sort of now the place everyone talking about, there's, um, it hasn't quite blown up just yet, although it might be getting there. Okay, so while that might be some of the most popular destinations, it is definitely not all of them. You can pretty much find digital nomads anywhere these days, <laughs> we're kind of everywhere. But some other really popular destinations that you might wanna consider could be Israel, Argentina, Colombia, Costa Rica, Brazil, Budapest, Spain, Bulgaria, and Prague. So it's a little bit of a mix of Latin America and Europe there. Again, there are some new places in Africa, like Kenya that are becoming more nomad hubs. And then you have all of Southeast Asia. So plenty of world destinations to kick off your journey or maybe just be your next spot. If you're curious, some of my favorite destinations so far have been Seoul, South Korea. So more like Northern Asia, absolutely loved Seoul. 
they have a huge coffee culture as well. It was really walkable in the city or you have the train. I absolutely fell in love with South Korea. My most recent location was Playa del Carmen, Mexico, which I meant to mentioned above and I fell in love with that. I had no idea that I could love Mexico that much. Um, I also spent a good amount of time in Wellington, New Zealand. So in another video I talked about, I spent a year in New Zealand. I ended up spending about three to four months in Wellington, which is the capital of New Zealand. It's great. New Zealand's not going to be the most affordable location. It's not the place you find a ton of nomads, but it is um, a really cool place that you might be able to go visit for a couple months at a time. And another place I really loved was Budapest, Hungary. Um, I didn't get to spend a lot of time here. I was only here for about a week and I had a really crazy work week, so I didn't get to explore very much, but it's definitely a place that I would love to go back to and explore a bit more. So that is it. That was a lot of destinations, but hopefully that gave you an idea of where people hang out and why and where nomads spend a lot of their time or short periods of time in all of those different locations. That's the beauty of being a nomad. You can see all of them in time. You don't have to pick just one. So if you still really don't know where to get started, there's just the options are too overwhelming. Be sure to check out my quiz below in the description. I will have the link and it will tell you the perfect destination for you and your preferences of where to start your nomad journey. If you liked today's video on where do digital nomads live, be sure to hit the subscribe link right below and to hit that bell so you get notified for more digital nomad videos, travel tips, and online business tutorials. So thanks for being here, you guys. I love it every week. Please leave comments and tell me where have you gone? Where do you want to go? I love talking about travel and I will see you next week. Thank you.